Ultimo, your trusted licensed real estate professional at Exit Realty Connections in Hackettstown, New Jersey. With over 36 years of customer service excellence, James is the smart choice whether you're buying or selling. Your dream property journey starts with James Ultimo. Contact me today to turn your real estate dreams into reality. James Ultimo, 973-214-6448. Step-by-step -step painting and general contracting, your trusted partner for all your home needs. For over two decades, we've brought our clients' visions to life throughout northern New Jersey. Our team of professionals and commitment to excellence deliver outstanding results. From painting, bathroom and kitchen renovations, additions, remodeling, and custom faux work, we've got you covered. Our team tackles projects of all sizes and complexities. Step-by-step -step painting, building dreams, one project at a time. We specialize in roofing and siding. That includes gutters, windows, doors, stone siding, decks, and painting. We also utilize new age technology like drones and 3D modeling. The drones keep our guys safe on the ground with an aerial perspective, and the 3D modeling gives us exact measurements for a precise job scope. Give us a call today. We'll be happy to provide you with a complimentary drone inspection. We look forward to keeping your home and your family safe. Sport Acura of Denville, we know you have a lot of choices when it comes to buying your new Acura. So why shop with dealers that don't value your time or play games with you? Why not choose a dealership that always values their clients' time and has set a benchmark in customer service for nearly 40 years? Make it easy. Choose Autosport Acura of Denville. For sales, service, and a relationship you can rely on, make it easy and choose Autosport Acura of Denville. There's a lot of seniors on this team. Oh, cool. That is a lot of teams. Our third and final senior cheerleader is Lucy Marioni. She's here with her parents, Phoebe and Scott. Lucy plans on studying fine arts and communications in college. Our first senior football player is number seven, Isaiah Barnwell. Here with Isaiah is his dad, Hayden, Aunt Carlene, cousin Aubrey, and brother Josh. Isaiah plans to study computer science in college. Next is number 23, Matthew Baxter. With Matthew tonight are Michelle and Duke, his parents, and his brothers, Brady and Tyler. Matthew is looking to major in the physical Matt therapy. Menendez thing is blowing up in his face by the way. Huh? Now the wife, she had, well, she it was a hit and run. Well, she hit somebody years ago. It was like five years ago. And Our next senior is number 16, Johnny Poitash. The chief of police He's here with Luna and John, his parents, and his sister anything. Angela. Because Johnny is looking to was. study business in college. They're reopening the so they're reopening the Let him go get Oh my God. He's been, he was brought up for corruption like, in, what, 2018, 2014, something. He's always been a corrupt 
Next is number 11, Jack Bray. With Jack is his mother, Stacy, and his sister, Madison. Jack plans to study business in college. Our next senior is number 15, Thanks, Anthony Conclo. With Anthony are his parents, Phil and Carol. <laughs> Brothers Johnny and Joa, Joey and sister Alexa. Anthony plans to study business in college. Next is number 79, Tristan Cruz. With Tristan tonight is Angelica Rojas' his mother and Kayla Cruz' his sister. Tristan plans to attend college to pursue a career in acting and filmmaking. Next is number 17, yeah, Drew Davis. So nice. With Drew are his parents, Kisha and Mark Davis. Drew plans to run track at the University of Texas and major in business and economics. Next is number 55, Ashvara Fritzinger. Escorted by his father, Garth, brother, Adam, and sister, Amanda. Ashvara plans to study criminal law in college. Our next senior is number four, Devin Goldberg. With Devin are his parents, Todd and Lynn Goldberg, and his brother, Evan. Devin plans to study business in college. Our next senior is number 61, Logan James. With Logan are his parents, Raina and Don, and his sister, Mia. Logan plans to attend college to study chemical engineering. Our next senior is number three, Logan Krizan. With Logan are his parents, Joe and Stacy, his brother DJ, and sister Brooke. Logan plans to pursue business and pre-law in college. Our next senior is number 58, Cameron Cordilla. With Cameron are his parents, Aaron and Aaron, and his brothers, Declan, Brady, and Colin. Cameron plans on attending Scranton University and playing lacrosse.
Next is number 64, Tommy Larson. With Tommy are his parents. PJ and Brian Larson and brother Chad. Tommy plans to attend college and study business. Yeah, I don't think I need a band setting up over there. I got a fair height, so you guys are going to go. All right, let me move the towel. Next is number 10, Matthew Laverde. With Matthew's mother, Lauren Salamanca. Matt plans to study business in town. Senior is number eight, Joseph Macrotondo. Joe is with his parents, Christine and Joe, and his brother James. Joe plans to study entrepreneurship after high school. to Christopher Lopez. Christopher is with his mom, Christine, and dad, Niel. Chris plans to attend college to study physical therapy. Do you help with anything? Senior is number nine, Nicholas Markovich. With Nicholas are his parents, Amy and Arthur, his brothers, Zach, Lucas, Jake, and Dante. Nick plans to study engineering at college and continue his football career. Senior is number 77, James McDermott. James is with his parents, Mary and Dave McDermott, and his brother, Kevin. James plans on attending community college after graduation. Senior is number 20, Dane Sorensen. Dane is with his mother, Adrienne. Dane plans on studying economics in college and continuing his athletic career in football, wrestling, or lacrosse. Next senior is number two, Joe Spira. Joe is with his parents, Anthony and Kelly, and brother Nick. Joe plans to study physical therapy while playing football in college. Number 25, Carter Stevens. He's with his mom, Cindy, his dad, Scott, and his stepmom, Paula. Carter plans to attend college to study business.
Next is number 34, Frankie Verano. Frank is with his mother, Grace, and father, Frank, and his siblings, Greg and Julia. Frankie plans to pursue a sports management degree and continue his baseball career in college. business. Our next manager is Nakul Rao. And his parents, Vayu and Bangalore. Nakul will attend college to study business and economics. Manager is Raj Shah with his mother Sono Shah. Raj plans to pursue a degree in business. Our next manager is Ryan Tracy. Ryan is with his dad Kevin Tracy and his mother Rebecca Dolan. Ryan plans to study criminal justice in college. And our final manager of the evening, Aiden Fitzpatrick. With Crystal and Greg Fitzpatrick, his parents, and Emma Fitzpatrick, his sister. Aiden plans to go to college to pursue a degree in engineering. <laughs> Can we have a big round of applause for our senior football players, cheerleaders, and football managers? Congratulations and best of luck to all of you. And welcome in to more Sussex Sports with me, Lloyd Wilson, as we're here in Somerset, New Jersey, as Bridgewater Raritan, that we are with well, the Bridgewater Raritan Panthers hosting the Phillipsburg State Liners. Welcome in everyone to a senior night presentation as we just seen and uh, was able to view all the seniors that were um, honored tonight as they are playing their uh, could say their last year of football where man you never know if you'll put on a helmet ever again but you know these are the bittersweet moments that if you are a high school athlete that you live for so let's give you the rundown before the kickoff comes before we take a step off the Rare, uh, Bridgewater Rare and Panthers come into this one one in five head coach by DJ Catalano 
their first game at home. They dominated against Edison 44 to 12, but then lost in the past five weeks only by one score. So all the contest, all these matches or rather games that they've been having for the past five weeks have been nothing short of a nail biter. Jack Bray will be the starting quarterback for the Panthers this afternoon or rather this evening coming into this game with a 979 passing yards on the season along with 13 touchdowns and six interceptions another player to watch on this offense Devin Goldberg the running back having coming in this one with 53 carries 229 yards along with a touchdown the other backup running back Dane Swanson 16 carries 193 yards and two touchdowns also has a t few touchdowns through the air four to go along with them this Bridgewater defense is going to be on Going to be put with a challenge today against this Fulberg State Liners football team that comes into this one four and one, and we'll get into them right now for the State Liners coming into this one four and one. Head coach by Frank Duffy. They did lose to Hillsborough fourteen to thirteen in the Rumble on Raritan, no pun intended, but they were able to beat Hundred and Central last week by two scores, twenty one to seven. This is also a uh, Phillipsburg team that did beat this bird and squad last year. They beat them 28 to 13. And we have interestingly a quarterback change due to injury. Originally getting the start coming into this game was going to be Jet Genovese. However, he will not play today. It will be the backup quarterback and Nick Stetner as we go through some of his stat lines through the year. So far in his, also in his senior year, he has four, he has completed four passes out of the 16 he has thrown, has 106 yards through the air and along with two touchdowns. So the junior in Jet Genovese, he will not be playing today due to an unclaimed injury. And the senior, Nick Stetner, will be getting the start. But this Phil, Phillipsburg team does have some weapons that they can go to one of them being the running back, John Wargo, the senior, coming in this one. That 53 carries, 358 rushing yards, along with four touchdowns. And also the backup running back, Cale Brevera, senior as well, 37 carries, 327 yards, and two touchdowns. Also some players to watch through the air for this Phillipsburg team. Kevin Burgess, wide receiver for the state liners. Coming in this one with 11 catches, 221 yards, and four touchdowns. A threat in the air along with Matthew Schwarber Jr. The junior, no pun intended, once again, 20 catches, 298 yards, and three touchdowns. This defense for Phillipsburg, some players to watch out for. Cameron Bohall, Kevin Burgess as well. Again, six hole tackles, seven tackles, and two interceptions. Patrick Day on that defensive back jaquil as well jaquil um dolly rather coming in this one with 14 solo tackles 13 total tackles and a fumble recovery that d line grifton friday johnson senior has a sack five solos but 21 total tackles in the season so far so this is going to be a game where Either team could really take this one, one being without their number one option, or rather their quarterback, the other one in this one just trying to continue their winning streak. So with that, senior night coming up here on More of Sussex Sports. Kickoff coming after these short messages.
John Basilow Memorial Field on the campus of Bridgewater Raritan High School. Tonight's game features the State Liners of Phillips Park High School versus your Bridgewater Raritan Panthers. The State Liners are coached by Frank Duffy. Your Panthers are coached by DJ Capilano. Tonight's officials, the referee, Greg Curry. Your umpire, Mark Caputo. Head linesman, Ari Hughley. Line judge, Wayne Jackson. Field judge, Ralph Frisco. Side judge, Stan Miles, and clock operator, Nash Pesissa. Here on Morris Sussex Sports with me, Lloyd Wilson, as we're geared up for senior night here in the zoo, as some of the student section would call it. So you have now entered the jungle. And welcome in. And hopefully we're in for a very great game as the home team, again, head coached by DJ Catalano. They're coming in here trying to get back on track, losing their last five games. They did start off the season strong with a win against Edison. If you missing the intro to this broadcast. Coming in this one, one and five. Trying to get back in the winning column. And for Phillipsburg, the State Liners, they're without their starting quarterback, the junior. Jet Genovese, and they now have the senior and Nick Stetner who will be starting from that position as we're awaiting the coin toss. Bridgewater Raritan has won the toss. 
So Raritan has won the toss. We'll see if they elect to defer or accept. So they defer, and Bridgewater defers, and Phillipsburg will be the first to touch the football. So for Phillipsburg, again, they come into this one 4 one head coached by Frank Duffy. They did lose to Hillsborough 14-13 in the Rumble on Raritan earlier this season. In their last time out, they were able to beat 100 Central 21 Two seven, and then this is a Bridgewater Raritan squad that did lose to this Phillipsburg squad last season, 28 to 13. So we'll have to see if there's some bad blood between these two teams. And for the Panthers, they want to definitely get a win. Them being on their senior night on their home Stop. turf. Please rise. So gentlemen, kindly remove your caps. As, we, honor America As with the we get ready for the national anthem, and after that, kickoff awaits. Back here on Morris Sussex Sports as Phillipsburg will be the first to receive. 32, Joe meaning Bridgewater Raritan will get the possession going into the second half. Our returners for Phillipsburg, Kevin Burgess, a player to watch in this game, along with Matthew Swerbo Jr., the junior, no pun intended. As we get this game set up, and it will be a short one by Felix Matos, where the Matos fair caught by number 17 in this drive for Phillipsburg. Will officially start waiting for the what? referee to give us the final spotting. It's inside the 20 yard line. And they will officially put that on the 28 yard line. So this drive will start from the 28-yard line. And again, quarterback Nick Stetner in at quarterback, replacing the injured Jet Genovese. To get this game started, they hand it off for a short game. It could be maybe about two. And that is to the running back in John Wargo. John Wargo, number 34. Number 34 and 21 in the backfield, that's Zion McGurn. Motion coming across. They hand this one off to number 34. 
and Wargo twisting and turning, but brought down after a short gain of about one. So third and long coming up. This Bridgewater defense. Anthony Cafaloni down there along with Chris Santo, Logan James. D-line is stacked up and they have, for the most part, early in this possession, early in this first series, kept the running game at a stint. Two to your bottom of your screen. Two in the backfield along with the junior. This one, a throw to the sideline, caught on the sideline for a first down. A nice completion to Matthew Schwarber Jr. The first throw from the backup quarterback and Nick Stetner, Nick Stetner is a completed one. They needed eight, rather they needed seven, and they got eight. So now this drive is at the 40 yard line. Again, Nick Stetner came into this game completing four of his passes out of 16 with 106 yards, but does have two touchdowns. This one a handoff to McGurn. McGurn churning his way for about three yards. Again, that defense for Raritan, for Bridgewater Raritan. Also in that defense, the linebacker, and Joe Spira. Comes into this game with 30 tackles, leading the squad. Two not to the top of your screen. Two in the backfield. That's McGurn and Wargo. Drops back, looks left, has a man caught, but short of the sticks as he continued to go towards it as the play is officially dead at the stick, so it's a first down. So the go-to guy so far in this drive is in Matthew Schwerbo Jr. This one, a toss to Wargo. Wargo has green on the arts on the outside. Gets about a gain of six. Wargo on the carry. Picks up five yards. Say officially five yeah, yards. Five. So second and five coming up for Phillipsburg. formation, two to the top of your screen. This one, an inside handoff to Wargo. Wargo able to shut off the first blocker and then gang tackled just before the 30 yard line, maybe at the 29. So they put this at the 28 yard line, rather 27. Trips to the top of your screen. Stack receiver set also to the top of your screen. And one to the left. That's Wargo of Stetner. Stetner looks left, throws left. Almost had it intercepted, but has a man. And then dragged down. Stetner's pass is complete. Number 17, Felix Mato. At the 17-yard line. Second catch for Felix Matos. Nine on the play. Second down and one. So he put this at the 23-yard line. And for Phillipsburg, they're starting to move this football. Phillipsburg were able to win their first three games against Cerebral Ridge and North Hunterdon. And aside from the loss against Hillsborough, they've been on a tear. They only lost that game against Hillsborough by one. This one, the motion man and a flag on the play. 
the motion man, it was Kevin Burgess. False start goes against the state liners. And for Bridgewater Raritan, it's been hard for them to catch a break. Coming into this one, one and five, after the stow run against Edison, just haven't been able to finish out the games against Union, 27 to 21 a loss, against Hillsborough, 29 to 21 a loss. And since then, it's been really one possession games for the Panthers. We'll see if they can close things out here tonight. First off has to start to stop this Phillipsburg offense as getting the handoff. That's Matos. Matos steps on the man at the five, diving. And then he's tackled at the one yard line. So we see Felix, Ma Felix Matos being a threat in the air, able to get open. But this time, just a direct handoff to him. And he takes it all the way to the one. Matos came into this game with five catches, 90 yards, and a touchdown. He almost had his second one of the year just, no, just then, just a few moments ago. So at the one yard line, ISO formation, the man all the way in the back is McGurn. And inside, they give it to Wargo. Wargo gets in for six. Wargo on the carry. Touchdown, state liners. And for John Wargo, now his fifth rushing touchdown on the season. We see here ISO formation. And then this is just whose offensive line is better. Wargo goes above all the traffic to get in for six. Extra point coming up now. The kick is up. And it's through as the kicker goes down. And that will be a flag running in to the kicker. Colin Hoey was able to put that one in. The senior, he was hit as he was going down. So it will be a flag on Bridgewater Raritan. Foul, roughing the kicker on so the penalty will be assessed on the kickoff. And for Phillipsburg, you couldn't ask for a better series. First series going down the field to put this one in for six. And Nick Stedner has to give him some confidence again coming into this game, throwing less than 50% of his passes, has two touchdowns on the season. That has to feel good given the confidence able to get, hit his receivers in space and then give it to his guy and Felix Matos in space to get them inside red zone territory at the one and finish it off. Their big body, John Wargo. Wargo again, the senior, coming in this one 5'11", weighing at 240 pounds. So now this kickoff will start from the 45-yard line inside of the Panthers' territory. So some strategy could potentially be put here as it can be a high kick to pin them deep within the 10-yard line. We'll see what Hoey does here for the state liners. He squibs this one, and this one goes right to the Panthers. And they say offsides on the state liners as it has to bounce at least five yards before the same team can touch the football. So in high school, you're not allowed to do a pop-up kick because I'm told. So now we'll do a re-kick. As we have a re-kick at the 50-yard line. Strategy still here, still in play. Ah. If you can pin this one inside the 10-yard line, again, we'll see what Hoey does. He boots this one all the way back to the end zone, and they take this one from the one. Here come the Panthers, having room to run. 
able to, able to avoid one tackle, but then tackled just at the maybe 26-yard line. We'll see where they officially put this one. Or the other 26 to 17. Gives the Panthers first and 10 from their own 17 yard line. So they start this one for the first time tonight on the 17 yard line. And here come the Panthers with their quarterback and senior, Jack Bray. Trips to the top of your screen, one to the bottom. This one, low snap, looks right, throws right, has a man. That one's caught. Able to get almost a first down with a gain of about nine. And that's number 34, Frankie Verano. Verano also the senior. Two of the seniors that were awarded, rather, broadcasted for their senior night. The motion man going across. This one, a low snap, screen. This one caught, has room to run, and here come the Panthers. One man to beat, able to evade one man. Only gets one more block, and he can get in for the end zone. Matos chasing him down at the 10. And what a big gainer for the Panthers. As we look at it here, this play looked like it was almost dead after the low snap. But taking it all the way inside red zone territory. On the far side, we'll be able to get a license plate on him. From the looks of it here, it looks like it was Matthew Croningold, but we'll be sure to get a license plate for him on that big gain. This one, handoff. Flag on the play after the handoff to Frankie Verano. Goes to number 34, Frankie Verano. There is a flag on the play. So on the catch, instead of number 27, it was actually number 20, Dane Swanson. The receiver as well. Dane Swanson, a running back, but also can play the wide receiver position. Came into this game with 16 carries, 193 yards, and two touchdowns. But through the air, he has 28 catches for 400 and one yards and four touchdowns. So six touchdowns all together on the season for him, but he is definitely a running back that can also be split out wide. Empty set for the Panthers. Trips to your to the bottom of your screen, two to the top. As the referee says, wait for his whistle. And that's exactly what they do. So here come the Panthers once again after the flag. Looking right, throws right, has a man in the fade route. This one just a tad bit overthrown. Great pass is incomplete. As his intended receiver. Pass intended for Joe Lopper Charles. Brings up second down. His intended receiver, number eight, Joseph Lacrotondo. So he trots his way to the sideline. Frankie Verano in there. On the side of Jack Bray. Motion man to the right. Bray takes the snap, waiting for the screen to develop. This was intercepted! And here come the state liners. This could go all the way for a pick six at the 20, at the 10. A man diving his feet, but it doesn't matter. It's a pick six for the state liners. Return for a touchdown by number 34, John Wargo. John Wargo with a touchdown and now a pick six. A score on both ends. As we see a dive at the feet, 
not able to get there. And the State Liners now go up two scores, one on the offensive end, and now on the defensive side. How we on to attempt the extra point? So John Wargo now has his first interception on the season, and he returns it for a pick six. Pending the extra point to go up 14-0. The kick is up, and it's through to make this a 14-0 ball game here in Somerset, New Jersey. And with that, we'll take a quick step off. We'll be right back here on more Sussex Sports. The Maximum Health Physical Therapy is an individually owned practice with offices in Bud Lake and Long Valley, New Jersey. Our licensed therapists use hands-on manual therapy and are actively involved in our patients' progress. We use a collaborative team approach which benefits our patients and we accept most insurance plans, including Medicare. We offer ARPWAVE Neurotherapy, which accelerates healing 10 times faster, drastically decreases chronic pain, is FDA approved, and is covered by most insurance companies. Please visit us at at MaximumHealthPT.com and regain the life you love. I enjoy helping nonprofits achieve their goals and really accomplish their mission, namely by nurturing my relationship with them, their staff, their donors, their volunteers, and their board members. I think the key to being trusted is really transparency. What I've seen time and time again is that when you give anything the right conditions, the support Back here on more Sussex Sports with me, Lloyd Wilson. And Philsburg has a 14-0 lead here in Somerset, New Jersey. We like to thank Bridgewater Honda for this broadcast. At Bridgewater Honda, we can get you into your next car efficiently and reliably. Our dealership is a proud call to Bridgewater, our home. It's proud to call Bridgewater our home, serving Somerset County and the surrounding area. We have the options that you're looking for, including new Honda models like the CRV, the Pilot, Civic, Accord, and more, as this one is a deep return inside the 40-yard line, almost at the 50, and the ball may have came out. We'll have to see what the referee says, but while they figure that out, Finishing up here on Bridgewater Honda, we have the options that you're looking for, including Honda models like the CRV, the Pilot, Civic, Accord, and more. Contact, contact us at hondabridgewater.com or at 908-722-5566. So for Bridgewater, they will retain possession after giving up that pick six on the other end to make this a 14-0 ball game. And for Jack Bray, have to come back out on this offensive end making sure that he does not turn the ball over for another score. He just threw his seventh interception on the season, but has double-digit touchdowns. Let's we'll see how the Panthers respond. Motion man to the far side. That's Dylan Tierney. Motion man coming across the line again. Now making this a trip set. The pitch man to the left side has space in front of him, following his blockers and bulldozing his way to the sticks. Frankie Verano on the carry. That carry number... Number 34, Frankie Verano. So for Jack Bray, again, coming into this one with almost a 1,000-yard season, was a 1,300 thrower, 1,300-yard thrower last year. So he has the capability to do so. Some miscommunication between head coach DJ Contalano and his quarterback on the field. Verano's still there. Has both running backs to his left and his right to the, to the top of your screen. This one, another handoff inside. And there is that front line for Phillipsburg. Gang tackled at the line of scrimmage. Again for Phillipsburg, that D line, Grifton Friday, Grifton Friday Johnson, Jack Reagan. And then Wargo in that linebacker position, not too far away from the action. Two to the top of your screen, one to the bottom, one right behind the offensive line, and that's Spira. This one being chased all the way back. A flag is thrown after the chase down from number 52, Jack Reagan. Reagan. So a holding penalty will be called on Bridgewater Raritan. This is going to back them up even more, making this a second and long. Uh, 
So we'll see where they officially put this ball. I see one referee saying 45 yard line. So this will be on the 47 yard line after the holding penalty. Making this. Again, second and long. The motion man going across. Motion, but then this one just thrown into the dirt as there was no option there. And for Bray, didn't really have much space to get it to his receiver on the far side. And Swarnison. So we've already seen Swarnson almost take one to the house inside red zone territory. But after the pick six, that was all washed away. Three thirty left to go in this first quarter. Trips to the top of your screen, one man to the bottom. Bray in the shotgun, takes the snap, looking left, pump fakes, now rolls to his left. This one, an off-balance throw. He has to just throw this one out of bounds. So a three and out for Bridgewater Raritan, and they more likely have to give this one right back to Phillipsburg after being pinned deep in their own territory or in their own territory. Don't want to give the opposing team any field position. The return man for Phillipsburg, number, number one, Kevin Burgess. This one, a high one, takes a bounce. And we take this now from the 25-yard line. Berg is able to make one man miss, able to juke out one defender, and then just shy of the 40-yard line, maybe at the 38. That's where this Phillipsburg drive will start. We'd also like to thank for this broadcast, Kevin Yento Real Estate and Associates. You can contact them at 908-334-4586 or Semerset County Home, SNJ.net. Again, that is Kevin Yento Real Estate and Associates. I formation for Phillipsburg. They hand this one off, inside handoff. That's Wargo once again with a gain of five, maybe six. And Wargo, you can't ask for a better half of football or even having been on both sides of the ball. Got a score for a pick six. Got a score for a pick six as well as a running touchdown. High formation once again for Phillipsburg. They do this for a counter. That's McGurn. McGurn. Able to extend his body almost to the sticks. Might be short. So it'll be a third and short coming up for Phillipsburg. Game of four yards on the play. Brings up a third down and one. Third and one. On exactly midfield on the 50-yard line. For Nick Stetner to be in a game like this, you know, when the the main guy, the starting guy goes down, your name is called, as they fumbled this handoff, who has it? The Panthers say they do. We're waiting for the officials' call. And the officials say that the Panthers do, and it's a turnover for Bridgewater Raritan. And just as we were just talking about Nick Stetner, and the stellar start that he has had, the stellar start that he has had, they turn the ball over at the 50-yard line, just a yard inside of Phillipsburg territory. 
This could give life to the Panthers at the 50-yard line. Motion. Swanson now goes into the slot on the bottom of your screen. Motion by the line. Beck hands this one off and throws it short to a receiver on the far side. Rather Bray. No gain on the play. So this play gets right back to the line of scrimmage. In the backfield next to Bray, it's Verano. Bray takes a snap, rolls right, throws right. This one out of bounds. Bray passes incomplete. So for the Panthers, they're one play away from their second consecutive three and out. for the Panthers haven't been able to move one yard since that turnover they just got after the fumble. Here's Bray in the shotgun, trips to the bottom of your screen, one to the top. Bray looks right, throws right, has a man, not able to get it to his man after the extension. And his back-to-back -back incomplete passes, intended receiver on that one was Colin Wood Woodring. Brings up fourth down. So now that brings up fourth down, and this offense trots off. And for Bray, he's just so far struggling. Aside from that Swanson wide receiver jailbreak screen, the offense has pretty much been stagnatized so far in this game. High punt as Burgess lets this one go out of bounds. Around the 25-yard line, we'll see where the officials officially put it. They say at the 30-yard line. So they'll be at the 31-yard line and starting off this drive. And for... The state liners, in all reality, you only sacrifice 20 yards of field position. So no harm, no foul. ISO formation once again for Phillipsburg. They hand this one off to McGurn. McGurn able to get about a gain of four. McGurn on the carry. Gain of four on the play. Brings up second down and six. Coming into this game for Phillipsburg. Again, coming into this one, four and one, two and one in the big Central American Silver. Zion McGurn came into this game with only five carries for 25 yards. Well over that today. Has a man, then this one is caught close to the sticks, but short of it. That pass called by Matthew Schwarber, Jr. Oh, we can give him the nickname MSJ. Not a bad nickname. We've heard worse. MSJ ain't bad. So with that, the first quarter has come to an end. It's a 14-0 ball game in favor of the Phillipsburg State Liners. We'll be right back here on more Sussex Sports after these short messages. This is as true for my clients and for my colleagues as it is for myself here at WIS. George J. Keller and Sons want your house to be the, the kind of home for all to see. Best roofing, windows, siding too. Great solar and gutters, we're here for you. Our seasoned pros are unsurpassed, so give a call. We'll take your task, transform your home, that's what we do. So give a call, we're here for you. 
For roofing, siding, windows, and solar, we do it all for you. George J. Keller and Son. Your family-owned operation since 1980. Call for your free estimate. Jen Basilino of the Kosher Real Estate Group, LLC, is a Morris County top real estate agent and New Jersey Circle of Excellence award winner year over year that takes the time and care to understand your real estate needs and concerns. <laughs> Back here on Moore of Sussex Sports, me, Lloyd Wilson, as we start this second quarter, has a man downfield, wide open, this one caught, number 13, Patrick Day, nothing but green grass in front of him, and they can go up now three scores, and they do. 20 to nothing on the road, Phillipsburg with a long touchdown. As we look at it here again, what a way to start off the second quarter, the first play a rollout on the opposite arm of their quarterback, Nick Stetner. And he lets this one loose to his receiver, Patrick Day. How are you on to attempt the extra point? Extra point. Coming up from Hoey. This one is up, and it is through to make this a 21-0 ball game after the long ball to Patrick Day. And for Phillipsburg, you have to love everything you're seeing. So Patrick Day, the 5'9 receiver. You know what they say about those short guys, able to run in space and have that speed. So Patrick Day officially, from what we're seeing from the stat line, is his first touchdown this season on the receiving end. Twenty-one nothing here in Somerset, New Jersey, as the Panthers await the kickoff. This one, a squib like kick, and this one's going to be immediately tackled at the 35 yard line. As that is where. The Panthers will start, and for the Panthers, have been struggling offensively. The pick six, the two consecutive three and outs, they have to find a way to get something going here. Always kick return to the 36-yard line by Matthew. So they officially put this at the 36-yard line. And now here comes Jack Bray and his offense. Trips to the bottom of your screen, one to the top. As this one is a flag before the play started, this one might be coming on the Panthers' side for a false start, as it is false, false start, start on the offense. It's five yard penalty, it brings up first down and 15. Same set, trips to the bottom of your screen, one to the top. This one, a pitch. Verano, this one, tackle behind the line of scrimmage and coming up like a heat missile, Cameron Bohall. Frankie Verano on the carry. The safety coming from the opposite side of the field to make that tackle. And Cameron Bohall, the corner from the far side, came into this game with 10 solo tackles, maybe just got his 11th four assists, but 28 total tackles as a corner. Two to the top of your screen, two to the bottom. Bray motions along, Swanson takes the snap, looks left, has pressure, he's sacked immediately back at the 20 yard line. Bray is sacked on the play. 
as we're going to see the replay here, immediate pressure from this Phillipsburg D-line after that blitz. The first one to get there, number 33, Jaquil Dooley, the, the, yes, the DB. Coming off that corner blitz, goes unblocked. So now third and forever in an empty set. Verano comes back, comes back to the backfield to assist Bray, maybe for a blocking assignment. Bray takes a snap, looks downfield, has no one, throws it short, completed, and just getting back to the 30-yard line after the catch was made by Woodring. And it's going to be another three and out, the third consecutive one for Bridgewater Raritan. Return man for Phillipsburg, Kevin Burgess. Kevin Burgess back to receive for the state line. This one goes up, nearly blocked. Burgess awaits for it. Takes his first bounce at the 45-yard line. And then this one ends at the opposing 45-yard line. Or the 55. On the 45-yard line. So they put this at the 35-yard line. And that's where this drive will start for Phillipsburg. As we get set for this second series in the second quarter for Phillipsburg. And with that, defense maybe not looking to the head coach for the Panthers, DJ Catalano's eye. He wants to take a step off, so we'll do so as well. We'll be right back here on more Sussex Sports. Selling and purchasing a home, new construction, townhouses, million dollar homes, rentals, and even commercial properties. Call her today at 973 202 2103. If you live in Andover, Blairstown, Byram, Frankfurt, Franklin, Frieden, Freelingheisen, Green, Hampton, Hardwick, Hope, Knowlton, Lafayette, Newton, Sparta, Stillwater, Sussex, and Wantage. Planet Networks is building high-speed fiber in your neighborhood. Visit GetPlanetFiber.com today to learn more. At Planet Back here on more of Sussex Sports with me, Lloyd Wilson, lunging his body, I believe that's McGurn after that carry, and it is for a gain of about four. Picks up five yards. Picks they up say five officially. Five. So McGurn, again, only came into this game with five carries and 25 yards. Well, he's getting a fair share of the offensive load today, along with Wargo. Two split out even, one to the top, one to the bottom in the ISO formation. They hand this one off to Wargo on that fullback carry, and Wargo bulldozing his way past the first down marker inside the 45. They'll officially put this at the 48-yard line. First and 10 from their own 48. ISO formation. Phillipsburg hand this one off to McGurn. McGurn, oh, able to bulldoze his way close to the first down marker. Gained about seven. McGurn on the carry. Gain of eight yards. Brings up second down and two.
wing formation in the backfield. Hand this one off to Wargo. Wargo able to get the first down just shy of the 40-yard line, maybe at the 39. Game three on the play. Good for a Phillipsburg first down. Again, John Wargo, he came into this game on the ground, 53 carries, 354, 58 yards with four touchdowns. Now has five on the season, along with an interception for a pick six. His first pick six of the season, ISO formation once again. Wargo in that second spot. They toss this one to McGurn on the right side. McGurn able to evade one, but then tripped up just at the sticks at the 30-yard line. He's slow to get up for a brief moment. 10-yard gain. So he's able to get the first down after getting to the sticks. First and 10 from the 31-yard line. And for Phillipsburg, this is the kind of game that you want to run. The clock is running. You have the lead up three scores. 6.27 left to go in this first half. Inside handoff to Wargo. Wargo is initially bumped at the line of scrimmage, but he continues to go. Has room on that left side. Able to bulldoze a man going out past the 20-yard line. Wargo on the carry. Wargo coming in this one. 240, <laughs> 240 pounds. Yards Over th yard 300 yards, close to 400 football. yards now. If he hasn't already. Unofficially. Wargo again in that fullback position. And we have a new guy all the way in the back. He gets the carry. That's number 24 and Sam Desch. Sam Desch on the carry. So McGurn goes to the sideline, and he gets a brief rest, and Desch said, let me join the fight. Desch in the backfield. Wargo in that fullback position. Iso formation, two split out to the top of your screen. They hand this one off to Desch. Desch stuffed for a minimal game. Loss of one on the play. Third down and seven. Third and medium coming up for the State Liners. And we really haven't seen the State Liners in any third and long position or situation. ISO formation again. Now this is the fourth straight time they've come on in this formation. As this one flag on the play. has a flag on the play and they say off, rather false start, false start on the offense. The five yard penalty. Brings up third down and 12. Clock continues to roll 440 as we're now just inside. Five minutes left to go in this first half. It has been all state liners. Wargo, motion to the right side of the offensive line. Desch now switch places and replaces. Rolled out to the right. Stenner throws. That one's caught on the sideline. Stenner complete. completes that one to number 10, Matthew Schwarber Jr., MSJ for short. Again, MSJ unofficially. I mean, I think that's a name that we can we can go with. I think it sounds pretty cool. 
And for the state liners, this is no slouch of a team. This is a team that went 11-1 last season, 4-0 in their division in the big Central American Silver. ISO formation once again for them. They hand this one off to Desh. Desh bouncing between the tackles, flag on the play, as we might have a holding on the offensive line on that left side. But for Phillipsburg, this is, again, no slouch of a team. Last season, 11-1 throughout the season, and then the loss came in the playoffs against a West Orange team in the NJSIAA tournament, Section 2, Group 5. They lost that game 28-7. But this is a Phillipsburg team that, again, for the past two years has been dominant and so far, only have two losses in between two seasons. On the 19-yard line, where it is first and goal. False start on the offensive line. On the play. False start that one, I believe, is Ben Corbin. That's a five-yard penalty. Moves the ball to the 24-yard line, As where it will be first and goal. The clock continues to run, but the offensive line now has two back-to-back -back penalties on them. Have to clean it up. They are up three scores, 21 to nothing, Phillipsburg. They were in the red zone, so this is still first and goal for Phillipsburg. Two to the bottom of your screen. Looks left, throws left, has a man. That's Burgess for his first catch of the evening. Burgess able to make one man fall down just at the 10-yard line, maybe short of it, rather, the 15. We'll see where they officially put it. They say the 18-yard line. He stepped Burgess out before out heading past the 15. Line. The second goal from the 18th. But, but for Burgess, that guy he was able to get his first catch of the evening. Stetner outside of the bobbled handoff has had a solid game. No turnovers, a touchdown. Here he is now in the ISO formation. He hands this one off. Wargo, Wargo spinning, and it takes four different Panthers to bring him down. Wargo on the run. Wargo is a big body, 240 pounds again. Brings up third down. Third down and goal from the 16 yard line. Now here's the quarterback. Going to the far side, Nick Stetner in the slot. Wildcat formation, they try to hand this one off to Felix Matos. And a flag on the play. This might be another false start, and it is on the offensive line. Three straight calls on the offensive line. In this down alone. Five-yard penalty. We now have third and goal from the 21-yard line. So from first and goal, we go to third and goal, and there's been three different penalties called on the offensive line. As head coach Frank Duffy tried to get spectacular. Two sixteen left to go in this first half. Stetner. Back in the shotgun, they hand this one off to Matos. Matos able to follow his blockers, but then he's stuffed down. Good, Matos on the carry. Great tackle, number two, Joe Spira. Brings up a fourth down. Fourth so goal fourth and goal coming up from the 19-yard line. So the clock's continuing to go down, and Frank Duffy might call a timeout to end this first half and kick the field goal. Oh, 
as he does call the timeout. timeout with 122 left to go in this first half. First and we might have the special half. teams coming out on the field. And we'll see after this quick short break. We'll be right back here on more Sussex Sports. It's designed to be fast. Up to 300 times faster than cable and up to 500 times faster than DSL. As fast as 10,000 megabits per second up and down if you speak nerd. We're talking cheetah, bullet train, lightning strike, hummingbird, race car kind of fast. Planet Networks, so fast, it's worth the wait. Back here on more Sussex Sports with me, Lloyd Wilson. We also like to thank Kuko Funeral and Cremation Services. You can contact them at 908-707-2058. Again, that's 908-707-2058. Kuko Funeral and Cremation Services. And for the State Liners, they're looking to go for this trips to the top of your screen. One man in the backfield, that's McGurn, taking the snap. Looks right, throws right, has a man in the middle of the field, and he was looking for Matos, but no flag for defensive pass interference was called. And the Panthers take over. Stetner tried to give his guy with room to run under it, but Felix Matos looking for the flag. He doesn't get one. So now here come the Panthers with 116 left to go in this first half, down three scores. Let's see what they can put together. Both teams have two timeouts. Empty set. Has a man in the middle of the field. That one caught. Hurry up offense on its way after the catch by Joe Spira. That's exactly what the Panthers are going to do. Getting to the line quickly. Again, both teams with two timeouts. Trips to the top of your screen. Empty set. Two to the bottom. Taking the snap. That's Bray. Bray has a man, but decides to throw this one out. Maybe couldn't get his feet set. Intended receiver, closest receiver to it was Woodrum. That stops the clock, though, at 102. Empty set once again. Same formation. Three to the top of your screen, two to the bottom. Bray looks left, rather, yes, looks left, throws left. Has a man just past the sticks. And that's number two once again in Joe Spira. Panther first down. Hurry up offense going. Trips to the bottom of your screen. Two to the top. Has a man over the middle. That one was in the stomach of Swanson. But that one then dropped. Two to the top of your screen, two to the bottom. Verano in the backfield with Bray. Bray looks left, throws left, but then that one's, looks like it was batted down. Brings up third down. But now brings up third down. Either it was batted down or Bray didn't have his intended receiver to the far side with the crossing route to save time. Throws that one incomplete with 38 seconds left to go. Extra protection back there with Bray with two to the top of your screen. Pass rush coming. Has a man on the far side. Almost slipped. Trying to evade multiple state liners, but not able to get out of bounds. Just past midfield. And now the timeout will come from head coach DJ Contolano. So just getting past midfield. 29 seconds left to go in this first half. Dane Sorensen on the completion. So we, uh, we get money for New Year's every four years. So every four years, you know, you try to work out the best deal you can get. We just stop getting more. So, so our 
21 nothing is your score in favor of Phillipsburg again. For Phillipsburg, they came into this one after a win last week against Huntington Central, trying to continue their winning streak. Whereas Bridgewater Raritan trying to get back in the winning column, coming into this one, one and five. Two to the top of your screen, two to the bottom. Verano goes left. They try to hit him with the wheel route, but then nothing there. And on the coverage, number 25, Marvelous Shabby. Now that's the name, Marvelous. Marvelous Shabby with Marvelous coverage. So this one, maybe the last play as not able to get him down. Felix Matos has space and bulldozing his way inside 40, just short of the 30, maybe at the 29. Matos out of bounds at the 32-yard line, first and 10. Maybe just getting past the 30 of the 29. We'll, we'll see. So they officially put him at the 32. So at the 32-yard line, here come the state line. The state liners might be able to try to put this one out in the third quarter. This one having to go up for it, Felix Matos. Matos able to bring it in with one hand. Matos had to extend for that one with his left hand, able to tip it to himself and keep it going. So the first turnover on downs for the Panthers. And here are the state liners threatening to go up four scores before halftime. Bray looks right, throws right, has a fade route in the end zone, but well beyond his receiver's reach, out of bounds. His intended receiver, MSJ, Matthew Swerbo Jr. So six seconds left to go in this first half. And for the Panthers, they're looking to play three deep. Coming up, maybe the final play of this first half in favor of Phillipsburg, 21 nothing. And with that, it will be a timeout against, well, in favor of Phillipsburg. They'll take their second timeout. They have one more remaining. But more likely just use their last one for this first half as there's only six seconds left to go in this first half. At this point, for Phillipsburg, they might draw up the same play that they just did, a fade route to either Matos or Matthew Schwarber Jr. Don't want to do anything endangering your lead. Turn the ball over. So it might keep things simple here if your head coach Frank Duffy We'll even see if the special teams unit comes out, and they will not. So, Phillipsburg, they're leaving their quarterback out there, the senior, Nick Stetner. So, Stetner working with three receivers to the bottom of your screen. And here it is. Looks left. Throws left. That one's over the middle. That one's tipped. With two seconds left to go, there is a flag on the play. We'll have to see what this is for. It might be holding against the offensive line, and it surely is. 
So now that makes the assignment just a tad harder if they still want to go for the long shot in the end zone. Frank Duffy could just take this one into halftime with two seconds left to go. And we'll see what he's telling his quarterback in Stetner. Holding call brings up second down and 20. Phillipsburg calls its final timeout. So Phillipsburg elects to call his last timeout of the half. As Frank Duffy wants to talk things over again, being up three scores. So Frank Duffy using all of his timeouts to make sure his guys are on the same page. And sometimes coaches will use that last timeout to just see what set you come out in to then address, adjust and address what you're doing. So now this is the final play of the first half coming up. And barring any crazy play from the state liners, they'll go up three scores into halftime. Trips to the top of your screen, one to the bottom. That's Schwarbro Jr. One-on-one -on -one with Schwarbro Jr. This one going to be short of the goal line. Schwarbro Jr. not able to get in the end zone. He's stopped at the two yard line, and that will do it for the first half, as it was just a tad under thrown by Nick Stetner, but with that, halftime score, Phillipsburg 21, Bridgewater rarer than nothing. We're going to halftime, we'll see how the Panthers can respond coming out of the half, as they will receive kickoff back here on Morris Sussex Sports. Working here, I would say that the most valuable thing WIS offers is freedom. The freedom to make the most of your role, to really go beyond the job description, the freedom to think differently and be rewarded for it, and the freedom to show up as 100% who you are. At Paint Paris, we don't just sell paint and paint accessories. We eat, sleep, and breathe it. Not actually, though. That would be weird. With our huge selection of incredible Benjamin Moore paints, choosing the right color and finish can be a big decision. Luckily, with over 40 years of experience, we can answer any question you have. Whether you're a seasoned contractor or a DIYer, we have all the tools you need to get the job done right the first time. Ready for your next project? Visit us at Paint Parade or shop online at paintparade.com. The County College of Morris Foundation Annual Golf Classic is coming to Brook Lake Country Club in Flora Park on Monday, October 16th. Golfers will enjoy 18 holes of golf on one of New Jersey's premier courses between a barbecue lunch spread and a buffet dinner. Registration begins at 11 a.m., giving golfers access to the locker room, driving range, and lunch in the clubhouse before our 12.30 shotgun start. At 5 p.m., enjoy an open bar cocktail reception prior to our 6 p.m. dinner and awards program. Proceeds benefit CCM student athletes. Register online at ccm.edu slash foundation slash golf. Come visit Angelina's Trotteria, located at 184 Columbia Turnpike, Florham Park, New Jersey. We are your neighborhood BYOB. Stop in and join us for lunch or dinner. Angelina's is proud to offer visitors the following specials. Tuesdays are two for two large pizzas for only $22. On Wednesdays, kids under 10 eat free. Thursday night is pasta night. All pastas on the menu are 20% off. Family serving friends can stop into Angelina's and let our family serve yours. At Pasquarella Brothers, we love creating great food for our customers. Everything is made daily using real fresh ingredients, and you can taste the difference. We specialize in creating gluten-free options for our customers, all prepared in a separate area so there's no cross-contamination. We also pride ourselves on providing unparalleled catering for events big and small. We love what we do. 
Stop into Pat's Corolla Brothers, you'll taste the difference. The band would like to thank all the parents, administrators, teachers, and staff that advocate for music in our schools. The steady support for the VRHS marching band has been the foundation for the band's many successes, including most recently a 2021 state championship title.
was just like, obviously, not in the way. They don't mind.
some clean, fresh air at the perfect temperature. That is good. Who installed the system? ICS. They're the leaders in HVAC. They make the duct work at their own factory, so we even save some money. That's impressive. You recommend them? <laughs> it's ICS for HVAC. I see why. Ah. Hey, Lorraine, go get a big plastic bag. Take some air home with you. Attention homeowners. Get ready to meet Brandy Brosian of Compass Real Estate. Brandy wants to sell your home with ease and maximize your return on investment, providing a personalized approach that includes deep cleaning, to staging, to professional digital exposure. Brandy's innovative approach provides so much added value that you and your home will feel the VIP difference. Don't wait another day. Reach out to Brandy Brosian today. Hey everyone, what's up? This is Sean from Sean Malloy Fitness. Here's a little video to show you what we do here. Introducing Gemstone Orthodontics, where brilliance meets compassion in crafting your perfect smile. With a board-certified orthodontist, Dr. Patel, your smile is in expert hands. Our commitment to the latest advancements in technology bring precision and comfort to your orthodontic experience. Whether you are considering braces or liners for yourself or for your child, call today at 908-852-9899 or visit us at www.gemstoneortho.com to schedule a complimentary consultation. Sussex Meatpacking in Wharton, New Jersey is a family owned and operated business specializing in USDA prime and choice meats, pork, poultry, lamb, veal, and many other store-made specialty items. They also have a fantastic deli, a wonderful market with all the freshest fruits, veggies, and pre-made meals, and they can cater any event, including your family holiday dinners, more delicious than you can on your own. Visit them at sussexmeat.com. Back here. Back here on more Sussex Sports with me, Lloyd Wilson. 21-0 in favor of Phillipsburg. Phillipsburg, again, coming into this game 4-1, and one, continuing, trying to continue their winning streak after their win against 100 and Central last week, 21-7. And on the other side, Bridgewater Raritan trying to get back in the winning column, coming into this, coming into this one, 1-5. One that first half was pretty much dominated by the running game and 
even a splash play in the mix of it. Patrick Day able to go off for a long ball and go into the end zone, adding six to now make this score 21 to nothing, but not before the pick six and also the rushing touchdown by John Wargo, the senior. Again, came into this game, 53 carries, 358 yards on the ground and four touchdowns. Now he has five touchdowns on the ground with an interception that he took all the way to the house, his first interception and pick six this season. So we have to see if Phillipsburg is gonna continue to dice up the same formula for, for success going into the second half, running the ball, Wargo, McGurn, and even a little bit of Desch in the middle of it as he wanted to join the party. Number 24, Sam Desch, the sophomore for Phillipsburg. We'll see how he, along with the stat, other stat liners, can get in the mix of this game. On the other side for Bridgewater Raritan, just have to put methodical drives together, together that result in points. They had three consecutive three and outs that they were not able to score on. And then they also had a filled fourth down conversion toward the end of that second quarter. Just have to put drives together that result in points and result in you getting closer into this lead, a big lead that Phillipsburg has gained through that first half. And it starts now for the home team as the Panthers will receive the ball to start off this second half. With a possible comeback in the mix, we, we have no idea. But I can tell you one thing, as I've been told, we are in the zoo, the jungle, where wild things have happened. We'll see if we have a wild one in store, folks, for Bridgewater coming in this second half. When we come back, kick off to start off the second half here on Morris Sussex Sports. Landscaping. We service all of your lawn care needs. We are a full-service lawn care and landscaping company providing traditional needs such as lawn maintenance, planting, trimming, mulch, tree removal, and stump grinding, as well as landscape design and snow removal. With over 10 years of experience serving Morris and Sussex counties for both residential and commercial properties, call DNA Landscaping at 973-223-5845. My room is so cold, my fish froze. Mine's so hot, my sneakers melted. Rooms with different temperatures? That means your HVAC system is outdated and wasting energy. At ICS, we'll install an energy efficient system that provides a constant flow of clean, fresh air at the perfect temperature in every room. You could save money each month, and the price we quote is the price you'll pay. Get a quote today. See why we say ICS for HVAC. I see why. At, back here on more Sussex Sports with me, Lloyd Wilson. We get set for the second half as the Panthers receive it. Oh, and Hoey, Let's see call. if they can start their comeback. Getting the ball back now. This one short kicked, takes a bobble on the far side and lunging forward past the 30, close to the 35, waiting for the official sticks. That's where this drive will start inside the 30-yard line. And for their quarterback, Jack Bray, struggled in that first half, also threw an interception that went back for a pick six. Don't want anything like that in the second half on this comeback attempt. So again, we talked about right before the kickoff happened, putting together sustainable drives that result in points. And the first time we've seen a stack set this one, Wildcat formation. They hand off to their guy going to the right side. That's Swanson. So Dane Swanson, who had the highlight play in that first half on the wide receiver jailbreak, jailbreak screen. Empty set, trips to the top of your screen, two to the bottom. Bray takes the snap, looks left, throws left, has a man. And able to evade two tackles, getting the first down, dragged down at the 50-yard line. And what a way to start for the Panthers. That one caught by number two, Joe Spira. Number two, Joe Spira, and up for a Panther. Hurry up offense in the making for the Panthers. Same formation. They were able to have a man jump. And offsides it is. 
On Jumping on the line, Ben Corey on the opposite side. Ben Corey, who was called for a false start in the first half, now jumps off sides in the second on the D-line. Verano to the right of Bray. Bray takes a snap, looks right, wanted to go deep, doesn't have it, goes the short route, that one caught, high pointing it. And now he's tackled at the 35-yard line after a sweet catch by Dane Swanson. Bray's pass is complete to Dane Swanson. Good for another Panthers. Panthers starting to move. About 20 yards out of the red zone. Swanson in motion. Bray pitches this one to Verano. Verano. Verano has room, bulldozing his way, continuing to move those feet, close to the 20, still going. Can anyone bring him down? The offensive line comes to bring him help, and he's past the 20 yard line. Verano on the carry for the Panthers. Inside the 20, we'll see where they officially put this one, close to the 17 yard line. Panthers, first down. Panthers on the move. And with that, we have an injury timeout on the far side. The injury against Phillipsburg. So as they're being attended to, we'll take a quick step off after this drive by the Panthers. What a drive they've been putting together. We'll be right back. Rather, we'll keep things here as it was a quick turnaround. I believe the injured stat liner on that play was number 13 in Patrick Day. So Patrick Day, who is, yes, not on the field, went to the sideline in some pain, and we have a wonky formation here. Only three offensive linemen at the line of scrimmage. Bunch set to the far side. Bray, along with Verano in the backfield. They throw this one almost a wide receiver screen, but that one was almost intercepted. Batted down. That one batted down by number 56, Grifton Friday, Friday Johnson. So the clock stops at 10.06. And what a drive the Panthers are putting together. Swanson coming in motion from right to left. Looking right. Bray has a man in the end zone. Slip to the house. Colin Woodring. Bray pass is complete to number five. And on the first series for the Panthers, they punch it in for six. And here is Bray, calm, cool, collected in the pocket. Went through his progression, had the defense looking one way, sets his feet, fires. And there's Woodring in the end zone, awaiting the extra point to make this a 14, a 14 deficit, 14 point deficit. The kick is up. Almost blocked, and it's through. 21-7 on the first series for the Panthers. Let's see what we got cooking. As the stat liners, we'll see how they respond on the offensive end after we return here on more Sussex Sports. The Green Wave isn't just what we call ourselves. It represents all we are called to. We strive for excellence in mind, body, and spirit. We put in the work in programs that test us, guide us to the colleges we pursue. We live true to putting others before ourselves, to the lifelong connections we've made. This is the spirit and strength we are called to. Back here on Morris Sussex Sports with me, Lloyd Wilson, and for Bridgewater Raritan, able to put a drive together that resulted in seven, Jack Bray throwing his 14th touchdown on the season to his receiver in Woodring. So Colin Woodring able to get into the end zone officially for his first time, rather, his second time on the season. He came into this game with 12 catches, 100 yards, and a touchdown. Well, he now has two touchdowns on the season. And the Panthers are down 14. Now let's see how this defense for the home team can stand tall 
in the jungle. We already said wild things happen in the zoo. And that's what this student section calls this field. So let's get started for Phillipsburg and this offense coming out who were very efficient in that first half. Burgess with a touch. Their main guy in Felix Matos, but talk about a main guy and the 240 pound uh, running back in John Wargo having a pick six along with the touchdown in the end zone. They hand this one off. That's McGurn. McGurn twirling his way for a short gain. Game three on the play. Brings up second down and seven. ISO formation. Nick Stetner, who had a great first half, aside from the fumble handoff, they're trying to stop Wargo. Wargo with a game of about three. So third and short coming up for Phillipsburg. Third and three officially on the 29-yard line. Wargo picks up seven yards, good for a Phillipsburg first down. First and ten so they do give him the first down at the 30-yard line. So it would have been a third and short, but they do give him the first down as they move the chains. ISO formation again, Wargo in that fullback position. McGurn, the farthest one, they give it to Wargo. Wargo hurdling a man. And if the Panthers want to have a comeback attempt, they have to stop this guy, number 34, John Wargo. It's been a menace on both sides of the football tonight with a pick six along with the touchdown. Wargo in the fullback position along with McGurn. They hand this one up to McGurn off the halfback counter. McGurn close to the first down sticks. McGurn he was tripped up. This may be now third and very short with only a yard to gain. Brings up a third down and one. For all my Madden players out there, engage eight right here on the front line. More likely, you know who they're going to hand it off to in John Wargo. And for Phillipsburg, this is the game they want to play. ISO formation once again. Quarterback dive, and he does get the first down, Nick Stetner. And for Phillipsburg, again, this is something they would love to do, just continue to move the chains, have that football move. This is a drive that started deep in your own territory. You're already at the 41-yard line. Clock continues to move. 7.07 left to go in this third quarter. McGurn, he gets the, can the carry, and he's stuffed at the line of scrimmage. No gain on the play. So McGurn and Wargo, the tag team in the backfield. Phil's Bird taking their time to the line, continuing to chew that clock. Wargo and McGurn, full back position, three point stance. Fake handoff. This is a play that they scored on the back end in the first half. They give it to Wargo, able to get the first down and more. Close to the 30-yard line, but shy of it. He's knocked out of bounds at the 40-yard line. Where it'll be they say at the 40-yard line, and the clock continues to run as he was tackled in bounds. 
So what happens when you run the ball so much and efficiently, you are susceptible to the play action. Exactly what worked to perfection that time, giving it to their main guy in John Wargo, who was able to pick up the first down. They give it to McGurn. McGurn tries to bounce this one to the outside, but he's now tackled at the line of scrimmage. McGurn on the carry, no gain on the play. Brings up second down and 10. McGurn will head to the sideline. Last time that he head to the sideline, the replacement running back for him was Sam Desch, who that's who we now see the furthest from the quarterback in the backfield. At the fullback position is Wargo. ISO formation. Drops back, throws right, has a man. That one caught by Burgess. Burgess trying to extend for the sticks. He might be a yard short. But Kevin Burgess now his second catch on the night. Gain of eight on the play brings up third down and two. So third and short again for the state liners. ISO formation. Man to watch on this play is Wargo in that fullback position. They give it to Wargo. Wargo extending his body. He was initially hit behind the line of scrimmage, but he is able to get the first down. Picks up two yards. Good enough for a Phillipsburg first down. And for Phillipsburg, this is a drive that started on your own 30-yard line. You're now on the opposing team's own 30. Able to take this 40 yards with essentially just running the football aside from the play action pass to Wargo. Halfback counter the Desh. Desh then tackled after a five yard gain. Desh on the carry. Gain of four on the play. Brings up second down and six. So they say gain of four. Brings up second and six. Trips to the top of your screen. Wildcat formation. Matos taking it himself. He's able to hurdle a man. This may extend the sticks. Picks up five yards. So it's a gain of five, so third and one. Quarterback dive to get the first down is successful. Continuing to move the chains are the state liners who've burned pretty much this entire third quarter aside from the touchdown. So it's been an eight minute drive for Phillipsburg. They hand this one inside the Wargo. Wargo has some space. Able to hurdle a man into the end zone. John Wargo. Wargo on the carry. Now his second touchdown in this game. On the ground. And we're going to see it here. Wargo and both Desch in that three point stance. Wargo able to evade one man. They say the lowest man wins, but Wargo hurdles his man into the end zone. Colin Hoey on to attempt the extra point. Extra point is up, and it's through. Hoey's kick is So the state liners respond with seven of their own to make this now a 
28-7 ball game after John Wargo. Now with three total scores on the night, the pick six, and now the two rushing touchdowns. We'll be right back here on Morris Sussex Sports. Hmm. Actually used to be deathly afraid of public speaking. I intentionally became an adjunct professor teaching tax, and I also became a Zumba instructor as a way of overcoming this fear of mine. They're both Back here on Morris Sussex Sports with me, Lloyd Wilson, as the state liners able to respond with seven of their own. Here are the Panthers to get this ball back. This one in the direction of Baxter. Baxter taking this one at the 30-yard line. Only able to retain, return this for about five yards. And that's where this drive will start. If they say the 35-yard line. Always kicking. It's run by Hacky Baxter to the 37-yard line. Where the Panthers take over first and 10. So they'll take it over at the 37-yard line. Odd formation again here for the Panthers. Most of the offensive line was on the right side and they now shift back to the line of scrimmage. Here's Bray in the shotgun. High snap, read option. Has a man and miscommunication on the play. Tough to see who was the intended receiver on that one. On the far side, on the far side was Spira. And running in the middle of the field was number 15, Anthony Carfaloni. So miscommunication on the play it results in an incomplete pass. Bray takes a snap, handoff, rather read option, has a man over the middle. This one's caught after the big hit and flags come in at the end of that play at the 50-yard line. After a strong catch by Swarnson. Brave pass is complete to Dan Swarnson. Good enough for a Panther first down. So Swarnson able to hang tough in there and catch that at the 50-yard line and penalties after. This may be unnecessary roughness. So unnecessary roughness. Personal foul on, Personal foul on Phillipsburg. 15 yards added to the end and 15 of the yards added to the after the play. 35-yard line. First and 10, Bridgewater Rarison. So a drive that would have continued at the 50-yard line. This one thrown left. And incomplete. Brings up second down attempt. Intended receiver on that was number 15, Anthony Caffaloni. So a drive that would have started at the 50 now continues at the 35-yard line after the 15-yard penalty. Two to the top of your screen, one to the bottom. Verano in the backfield. Motion man, Swanson now trips back into the game. They hand it off to him. Rather, it'll be a QB keeper with the quarterback in Jack Bray. And the first one to get there in the backfield 
Number nine, Jaden Lucas. Jack Bray loses one yard on the carry. Brings up third down and 11. Third and long coming up for the Panthers. 106 left to go in the third. Motion man, that's Swanson. Read option, that one over the middle, has a wide open man, that's the receiver, rather the running back of Verano, he's able to juke out a man into the end zone. Brady's pass is caught by number 34, Frankie Verano, Frankie Verano able to get into the end zone after the read option, as we're gonna see it here. Your eyes are on Swanson, but you have to watch out for the man going straight up field and Verano and he's able to get into the end zone for six, awaiting the extra point. I said receiver, but he's really a running back. But shoot, he plays both of those positions after the bobble snap. And the play is immediately whistled dead after the bobble snap. So this will stay a 28 to 13 ball game after the touchdown made by Verano. We'd also in this broadcast would like to thank, thank David Ferez Bridgewater Chevrolet. You can find him at 1548 U.S. Highway 22 East Bridgewater, New Jersey. Again, that's David Ferez Bridgewater Chevrolet in Bridgewater, New Jersey. So after the failed extra point, 28-13 is still your score. Kickoff coming from the Panthers, giving it right back to the state liners. And that one is going to be fair caught by number seven on the far side, Mike Brocco. So here come Phillipsburg's offense once again that resulted in six after a hurdling Wargo. Phillipsburg takes over first and 10 from their own 25-yard line. Yeah. Looks left. Looking for his man to open up. He's not going to do it, so he's going to take it off by himself, but then sack before he gets back to the line of scrimmage. Impressive defense that time by the Panthers. Nick Stettner tried to find an open man on that left side, but clamped up on that back end of the defense. Had to take that one and run with it. Second down. They hand this one off to Wargo. Wargo again is taking almost the entire defense for the Panthers to bring him down. And that may do it for this third quarter. As Wargo is hobbling after that carry. Clock continues to run after the official rotates his hand and with that we go into the money quarter the fourth quarter 28 13 Phillipsburg as we go into the fourth John Wargo carrying the load for Phillipsburg we'll be back we'll be back here on more Sussex Sports after this commercial break bottom line though WISP supports my passions. I truly believe that WISP wants me to be the best version of myself, and it's such an amazing feeling that I truly have the freedom to do that here.
majestic flowers and gifts. Your trusted family owned and operated floors since 2006. Our loyal customers are always satisfied with our attention to detail and customer service. We serve all of Morris County and offer deliveries for any flower needs. Providing our customers with a variety of flowers from prom flowers to anniversary arrangements, wedding centerpieces, get well soon flowers, funeral flowers, and much more. Next time you're thinking of getting flowers for your loved ones and special occasions, rely on Majestic Flowers and Gifts to provide nothing but the highest quality. Thank you to all the sponsors of the Big Brother Earth and High School. Back here on Morris Sussex Sports with me, Lloyd Wilson. We'd also like to thank for this broadcast, JAG One Physical Therapy. You can contact them at 908-224, as this one is batted down. Great coverage on the back end and tender receiver, Matthew Strobel Jr. But again, for this broadcast, we'd like to thank, thank JAG One Physical Therapy. You can contact them at 908-224-2705. Again, that is 908-224-2705. Intended receiver on that one, Matthew Schwarber Jr. The batted down from this Panthers defense. Nick Stetner has had a solid game, we can say. I was going to say solid second half, but we can say entire game aside from the fumbled snap in the first half. This one, handoff to McGurn. McGurn stuffed at the line of scrimmage, and he's going to be brought down by three, four different Panthers. Third and long coming up for Phillipsburg. McGurn on the carry for the State Liners. Picks up one, brings up third down. Third down and nine. A rarity that we see a third and long from the Phillipsburg State Liners tonight. But here they are. Here's now Nick Stetner. Stetner in the shotgun. McGurn to his right, two to the top of your screen, to the bottom of your screen. Motion man coming across. They hand it off to them. Matos has a man thrown. And here's Swarbo Jr. Swarbo. Switching field positions, trying to juke out the entire defense. He has room to run at the 20, at the 15, and pushed out at the 14-yard line. A lofty one in the air after some razzle-dazzle from Felix Matos. Getting past the 15 and pushed out at the 14-yard line. So here come the state liners after the trick play that Felix Matos was able to throw to Schwarber Jr. Here's now Matos in the backfield with this wildcat formation. He gets the direct snap in between the gaps, shooting it up into the end zone. He goes high stepping in. Felix Matos. Matos now with his second touchdown on the season. One through the air and now one on the ground. His leading blocker, Charles Mayna, and he's able to shoot it up and high step his way in for six. It doesn't have to be your senior quarterback, Stetner. Sometimes you just give it to your guys and have them make plays. Awaiting the extra point to make this 35-13. The extra point is up, and it's through. 35-13, Phillipsburg, after the touchdown by Felix Matos for his second touchdown on the season. We'll be right back here on more Sussex Sports after these short messages. Well, I'll tell you right now, boys. Athletic Fields of America in Montville, New Jersey has become an industry leader in synthetic turf. Serving the greater New York, New Jersey, and Eastern PA regions, we have delivered hundreds of both synthetic turf and natural grass sports fields for youth and recreational levels all the way up to the highest standards and requirements of the NCAA. Our goal with every project is to provide our customers with exceptional workmanship, extraordinary service, and professional integrity while constructing a superior product that you can enjoy for years to come. Visit athleticfieldsofamerica.com. 
WIST gives me the freedom to be entrepreneurial, innovative. I feel supported to bring 100% of myself and my personality to work. Back here on more Sussex Sports with me, Lloyd Wilson, after the score from Phillipsburg, making this 35-13. This one just inside the 30, being dragged down just before the 35-yard line. As we have an injured state liner, he's able to actually walk up on his own power. Injury timeout, they still wrestle, and that's Cameron Boal. Monkey formation for the Panthers. They go back to normal at the line of scrimmage. One to the top of your screen, two to the bottom. Bray in the backfield with two. Takes the snap. Read option once again. Rolls out to his right. Has to get rid of it. He throws, throws to a man. But that one's underthrown. Bray's pass is incomplete. Brings up second down. Intended receiver in Woodring. Woodring, who already has a touchdown in this game after the slant in the end zone when they were on this same side of the field. Trips to the top of your screen, one to the bottom. Bray looks left, waits, throws, uncorks, diving at the 45, and what's the signal? They say incomplete. Incomplete. Intended receiver on that one was Swanson. So here's now the Panthers in danger of another three and out. A three and out that they haven't had since the first half. It'll be their first three and out of the second half. Two to the top of your screen and two to the bottom. Split evenly. Motion man Swanson. He goes across. Bray looks left, throws left, and then just some miscommunication on the route as he was waiting for the football number 15 anthony carfaloni definitely some miscommunication as the pass was well behind his intended receiver as the special teams unit now comes out and that just has to kill the drive for the panthers as they weren't able to put anything together The return man and Kevin Burgess. High punt, fair catch inside the 30, past the 35. We'll see if they put this at the 36 or 37 yard line. Also for this broadcast, we'd like to thank Nissan of North Plainfield. You can reach them at 908-755-6400. Again, that is 908-755-6400 for Nissan of North Plainfield.
So after the short yard carry, clock continue to move as we're about 15 seconds away from 10 minutes. ISO formation for the state liners. They do the inside hand off the Wargo. Wargo, C seems to be doing just fine. Stiff arming a man past the 50 yard line, but a flag on the back end of it. Flag call on the offense, pushing the back, whether they say holding. Aside from the holding play, though, John Wargo has just been a bust. And then for some reason, and I, it's crazy that I say that, for some reason I've been seeing a lot of Jerome Bettis, uh, Jerome Bettis posts on Instagram for some odd reason. I don't know why he's popping up on my timeline, but Jerome Bettis has been the person I've been seeing for the past 48 hours. And I haven't seen a man like the bus, obviously, personally. But I think John Wargo pretty much fits the description. 240 pounds, and it takes about the entire defense to get him on the ground. ISO formation, once again, rather just one man in the backfield. That's Wargo. Who else would it be? On the far side, he's bouncing off his own man, stiff a man at the 40-yard line, and then being tackled or pushed out just beyond the 35, for the 45, at the 46. John Wargo. Who are you gonna call? John Wargo. Third and short coming up for Phillipsburg. If I had someone I was talking to here, I would ask him, who do you think this ball is going to? And I think we all would know John Wargo, who's in the backfield right now, along with Sam Desch. Desch, he gets the carry. Oh, oh, he's being tackled behind the line of scrimmage. The entire defense there. So the entire defense there to tackle Sam Desch behind the line of scrimmage. Desch on the carry. With that, fourth down coming up, and the punt team coming for the State Liners. The punt team coming out for the very first time tonight for the State Liners. The return man for the Panthers, Swornson. This one, a long one. Swanson gets the return, and it's gonna be a minimal one of about five. Here come the Panthers. Down 35-13, and at this point, you're just trying to put drives together that can get you points. This one, a toss to Ver Verano. He, like, he wanted to throw, but he's tackled well beyond and behind the line of scrimmage. Loss of about seven. So Frankie Verano, had the option to throw, but he was tackled behind the line of scrimmage with a big loss on the play. 7.20 left to go in this game. Trip to the bottom of your screen, one to the top. Has a man, that's number two in Spira. Spira catches it just to get back to the line of scrimmage to make this a third and long. Game seven, brings up third down and nine. So 39 coming up 
for the Panthers. They switch sides. Top of your screen now is Trips. One man to the bottom of your screen. Verano to the right of Bray. Bray going to uncork this one downfield. And that one is caught at the 30-yard line, being tackled at the 20. Number 20, Dane Swanson. We're going to see the boys in the pocket to let this play unravel. Bray, you see, as a man all the way, and was able to uncork this one and lead his man, Swanson, now in red zone territory. Motion man coming across. That's Swanson who just made that big catch. Bray looks. Wide receiver Joe breaks screen. Swanson has nothing but green grass to follow him. Following his blockers into the end zone. Six for Dane Swanson. <laughs> Swanson now. He led the team in receiving yards coming into this game. This time we see him leading the way for his team into the end zone for six. Swanson came into this game with four touchdowns through the air. Just got his fifth. Going for two. Only one lineman blocking as Bray was rolling to his right, but right, then right. he's halted after a flag is called on the play. Legal procedure on Bridgewater Raritan. I believe they're going to call an illegal. I think they're going to call an illegal formation. Trips to the top of your screen, one man to the bottom. Verano to the right of Bray. Bray takes a snap, looks left, has a fade route in the end zone. This one going up for it, high pointing it. Oh, but then just joggled loose at the end of the play. That's what we call mano e mano and breaking it up. On the back end is the junior, David Blum. So with that, 35-19 after six points come from the Panthers. We'll be right back here on more Sussex Sports. CEO of Wiss Family Office. I have two amazing children. I'm the daughter of French and Italian immigrants. Above all, I'm someone who derives strength and confidence from my ability to connect with others, and I strive to make a difference in their lives. Back here on more Sussex Sports with me, Lloyd Wilson. We'd also like to thank another one of our sponsors for this broadcast, Value Auto and Van Rental. You can contact them at 908-851-9595. Again, that's Value Auto and Van Rental. You can contact them at 908-851-9595. Six goes in for the Panthers after the Dane Swanson Joe Break screen touchdown. Phillipsburg <laughs> awaiting the the awaiting the kickoff return. Kickoff comes on the far side. Having room to run and then tackle just before the 50-yard line, Matthew Schwarbo Jr. Sir, Jr. on the return. Tackle at the 49-yard line. So the takes over. They say at the 49-yard line, just shy of midfield. And for Phillipsburg, with a, essentially a three-score lead, More likely just going to run this one out. Keep it safe and keep it on the ground. As Stetner and this offense trots back out in the ISO formation. No receivers on either side. They're clearly just going to run this one as Wargo gets three yards on the carry. Wargo, who more likely will be my number one player of the game, or 
foreshadowing our player of the game, John Wargo. John Wargo, our more likely player of the game. He has a pick six on the defensive end and then two rushing touchdowns on the offensive end. So we'll see. More likely, he will be our Climate Care LLC player of the game. ISO formation once again, and Phillipsburg pretty much letting this play clock wind down. They hand off to McGurn. McGurn goes forward, and he's tackled after a gain of four. Or rather, I formation. Wargo in the backfield along with McGurn. One split out to the top of your screen. They hand this one off to Wargo. John Wargo gets the first down and a few more as the clock continues to run and Wargo continues to churn as he's slow to get up on that play. We've seen him hobble off in that first half as he's going to try his way to the sideline. And smart play by head coach Frank Duffy, knowing that you have this game in control, not wanting to get any of your star players hurt going later on into the season. Over the, the tail end of the season, high school football pretty much on the cusp of ending very soon with only a few weeks left to go in the season. Three forty-five left to go in this game. McGurn in the backfield. McGurn gets the call on the left side. He's out for a gain of about four. We'll say three. Also in the backfield is number thirty-three, Jaquil Dooley. Timeout taken by the Panthers. So the Panthers want to talk something over and talk things over. We'll be right back here on more something more Sussex Sports. Do your glory days as a high school athlete feel far behind you? Are memories of being out there competing so clear that you can feel it? But then reality sets in and your stiff back, achy knees, and painful shoulders remind you that it's been years or even decades since you can move that way. Don't worry, the team at Better With Physical Therapy's one-on-one -on -one customized care can help you feel and move better again. Their specialists will find the cause of what's slowing you down and build a plan that will help you realize that your glory days are still ahead of you. you can get better with better with physical therapy located in the madison ymca request an appointment today at betterwithpt.com back here on more sussex sports with me lloyd wilson but like to thank another one of our broadcast rather sponsors honda bridgewater you can contact them as here goes sam desh following his blockers in for an easy score Sam Desch on the carry. Sam Desch able to get into the end zone for the first time tonight, following his lineman, number 54, Joey Ross, leading the way. Going untouched and unblocked for the rest of the 15 yards to get inside the end zone. And for Sam Desch, officially his first rushing touchdown on the season. So Sam Desch, who doesn't get his number called often in the backfield, able to get his number called for a touchdown score. As they now run up the score, 42 to 19 after the extra point is good, as we'll keep things here. 
So as I was saying, we'd like to thank another one of our sponsors, Honda Bridgewater. You can contact them at 908-722-5566. Again, that's 908-722-5566. We'd also like to thank North, North Point Bank. You can contact them at 908-872-3434. 908-872-3434. And lastly, Five Star Orthodontist. You can contact them at 908-428-4354. Again, that's 908-428-4354. They are located at 600 Garrison Road, Bridgewater, New Jersey. Kickoff coming from Hoey. Boots this one. Taken at the 20-yard line. Running along the sidelines and extending his body to the 45-yard line for a solid return. On the return was number two, Joe Spear. Logan Grisan on the return. Takes the ball to the... 45-yard line, where it's first and 10 pitches. Trips now to the top of the screen, one to the bottom. Bray looks, fires. Now they fire on that far side with a wide receiver pitch himself. Out to the 45 yard line, rather 35. They first threw it over to number five, Colin Woodring, then Woodring. Was able to throw it to his intended receiver. Trip to the bottom of your screen. Bray looks left, but then decides to roll to his right. Still looking for a man, but he's going to go right out of bounds after a short gain of about three. Bray scrambles for a two-yard gain. Brings up second down and Two-yard gain on the play officially. Second and eight coming up. Bray looking. Now rolls to his right. Surveys. Gives some air on his man, but then that one goes right out of bounds, out of the reach of his receiver. Intended receiver was Woodring again. Ronald to the right of Bray. Motion man coming across. That's Locachondo. He's going on the wheel route on that right side. That's where they're looking. They go to the right side, diving for the ball. And they say incomplete pass. As if the pass was completed, it would have been right at the six for a first down, but with the incomplete pass. Clock stops at 233 and fourth down coming up. Trips to the bottom of your screen, one to the top. Takes the snap. Bray looks, steps up in the pocket, has a man downfield. That one almost caught, nearly intercepted, and we have a flag at the 30 yard line. There is a flag on the play. Legal contact. Waiting for the official call, but we believe it's illegal contact as. The intended receiver on that play was Lacrontondo. Lacron Tondo. So Lacrontondo was the intended receiver on that play, and both the safety and corner came over to lay down the foundation 
David Blount and Cameron Boho are waiting for the official call. The flag has been picked up. The play is an incompletion. So they actually say no flag on the play, and it is ruled an incompletion as well as a turnover on downs, the second turnover on downs for the Panthers tonight. 34 yard line. So officially 226 left to go in this game. Hillsburg still with three timeouts. As the Panthers have two timeouts. This one off, Sam Desch. Desch only had one man to beat before he went to the end zone. And saving that touchdown was the quarterback in Jack Bray. Rather, that would be number 13 in Alex Burby. Receivers to the top of your screen. Iso formation. Desh still in the game. They hand it off to him once again. He's cutting in between the tackles. He's continuing to move those feet, getting past the first down a yard more. One twenty-five left to go in this game, and for Philsburg. They continue their winning streak, more likely to advance their record to five and one. Next week, they will be on the road again to take on Union High School at 7 p.m. And then for Bridgewater Raritan, they will fall to now one and six on the season as they will come back here at home to take on Elizabeth High School at 7 p.m. once again. I will also be here for that game. I've seen it on my schedule. So for Bridgewater Raritan, they have another week to come back out here next week against Elizabeth High School. As the time is ticking, it's final 25 seconds. And be sure to watch our Instagram page on more Sussex Sports for our Climate Care LLC Player of the Game, who we have chosen as John Wargo. Wargo with an interception and a pick six, his first of the year to make the game at one point, 14 to nothing. And then the two rushing touchdowns that he has on the offensive end. We'd like to thank all of our sponsors as well as our producers here on more Sussex Sports. Final score here from Somerset, New Jersey, 42 to 19. Thank you for tuning in to another more Sussex Sports production. Thank you and have a great night. Thank you for attending tonight's game and please formation the man all the way in the back is McGurn and inside they give it to Wargo Wargo gets in for six Wargo on the carry touchdown state liners 
And for John Wargo, now his fifth ru rushing touch from the run. And here come the Panthers. One man to beat. Able to evade one man. Only gets one more block and he can get in for the end zone. Matos chasing him down at the 10. And what a big gainer for the Panthers. Sussex Sports, me, Lloyd Wilson, as we start this second quarter, has a man downfield, wide open, this one caught, number 13, Patrick Day, nothing but green grass in front of him, and they can go up now three scores, and they do. 20 to nothing on the road.